Today, we're going to walk through why the Service Stack Blazor WASM template can be one of the most productive ways to build your next line of business application. The Blazor WebAssembly or WASM template integrates hosted Service Stack services with a decoupled Blazor WASM client. This decoupling of the client and server helps to keep a clean architecture for your application by clearly defining the boundary between your client and API. Service Stack's message-centric design always requires the declaration of these message objects when creating your service APIs, defining part of your service contracts. These data transfer objects or DTOs represent the request and response data structures that will be sent or returned from your services. These DTOs can be translated into other languages and used by the client integrating with your services, providing a typed end-to-end -end integration. This separation usually comes with a small amount of additional work to maintain that typed end-to-end -end integration when orchestrating changes between your server and client. For example, regardless of if you're building a TypeScript web client or a mobile app using Swift, you need to be able to keep the shared data structures between the clients and server in sync. We make this process easier using ServerStack's Add ServerStack Reference feature, which can be used from most major IDEs and through other CLI tooling. Every time a server data structure changes, we can update our respective client data structures using one of these tools pretty quickly, but this does still take some time and adds friction to the development process. However, since Blazor WASM allows us to have the same language of c -sharp on both the client and server, we can leverage all the advantages of well-defined service tech APIs without any of the drawbacks of representing shared data structures in different languages. This makes the development model of building a Blazor WebAssembly application with Service Stack an extremely productive one. Let's walk through an example of adding a feature to an existing to-do application that comes with the template. First, to start our project from the Blazor WebAssembly template, we can use the jamstacks.net website. Here we can provide a name to our new project and click the Blazor WebAssembly template to download. If you want a detailed walkthrough of this template, check out our other Blazor WebAssembly video, but for now we're just going to extract our new project and open it with Visual Studio 2022. Running our application for the first time, we have several example features on the left hand side, including a simple to-do application. This to-do application persists items on the server and presents them within the Blazor WebAssembly user interface. Here we can add, delete, toggle the state of each to-do item, and filter based on their state. To make this a bit more useful, we're going to extend the functionality by setting due dates for each to-do item. This feature will require changes to both the Blazor front-end as well as the server stack back-end to get the behaviour we want. Starting with the back-end, we want to be able to both persist the due date on the server as well as communicate the due date in the request and response objects. This example to-do application uses an in-memory store that allows us to use Service Stack auto query functionality just like if we were using ORM Lite with an actual database. Plain old c -sharp objects, or POCOs, are used to represent an instance of a to-do item in the same way ORM Lite represents a row in a table. That is, these classes have properties for storing the data they represent, but without any behavior. So if we look at the current to-do class that comes with the example, we can see three properties of information. The ID, the item text, and the isFinished flag. Since it's in memory, we don't have a schema to update, but this would be required if you were using a SQL database. Adding a new property called due date of type nullable date time, we get an optional piece of information to store about our to-do item. We will also initialize one of the default to-do items with a due date to present on the Blazor user interface on startup. Navigating to our Blazor client project, we have a pages directory that contains our Blazor pages. Opening the to-do mvc.razor file, let's add a div and a span to optionally display the due date if there is one present. Without our application running or rebuilding, here we can see the autocomplete on our to-do object already contains our new property since the operation to query to-dos from our API returns the same shared type we use for storage in this example. So while our application supports the ability to store and view this information about each to-do item, the API doesn't yet support creating or updating to-do items with a due date. 
Looking in our service model project in the todo.cs file, we have our API data transfer objects or DTOs, which represent the API contracts for our todo APIs. Here we can see a create to do class with just a text property. With our application still running, let's add the same nullable due date property here and in the update to do class as well. For various kinds of changes, the hot reload feature in Visual Studio will need to perform a rebuild, but this can be done on save to speed up your iterations by ticking this box when prompted. Now that our request DTOs have been updated, let's look at our service interface project which contains our service implementations, including the to-do service. The create to-do service is creating a new item with a generated ID and the rest of the information comes from the request object itself. We can apply our new due date property here with our application still running and jump back to the front end. Back to our to-do mvc.razor file, we need to wire up the new due date property so that our create and update API requests persist our new due date data on the server. Currently, the form at the top only collects the text of the to-do item, which is used in the add to-do method to create a new item when the form is submitted. Let's make some room so we can add a date picker for the due date to the right of the text. Servicestack.blazor has a date picker called datetime input, which can be used to bind our shared request instance. Visual Studio 2022's hot reload feature also works with Blazor WebAssembly. Some changes, however, like adding controls can require a rebuild. This is another place where selecting the automatic rebuild option can speed things up. For a lot of code changes, however, hot reload will update your client without a full reload of the page. For example, selecting a date now populates the due date on the server, but for high latency clients there will be a flash when the to-do is returned from the API. To make it feel instant regardless of client latency, we can apply the due date on the client side directly in the add to-do method while waiting for the API response. Hot reload works while the state of your application remains the same, enabling fast iteration and testing. If you are not getting this experience, make sure the hot reload on save option is turned on. This can be found in the drop down menu of the hot reload button and it makes things a lot easier to iterate on. For the last part of the integration, we need to persist the due date between updates. The toggle to do method is called whenever the to do item is clicked, toggling between finished and not finished. Adding the due date to the update to do request persists the changes between toggles and we get the behavior we wanted for our feature. Now that we have our due date visible and able to be created and updated on the client, let's make our overdue items a bit more obvious by changing the background color to red when the items are overdue. We can do this by checking the due date against datetime.now and switching some CSS classes that change the background color to red. As we saw in this example, once changes were made on our server to support the functionality we need, we got all the type safety and IntelliSense in our client project straight away. This is because our DTOs were shared with our client in the same language and we could use those changes as soon as they were added. Since the shared DTOs have no behavior and purely act as messages between your client and your server, they can safely be shared since they only represent your API contracts. Having the client and server in the same language, we get clean API separation while getting instant feedback in our IDE. This means as soon as your API is ready to use or test, you can jump straight back into the UI development using the same language and still have that clean API separation. With the use of the API async methods as shown in this template, you know exactly what data you're working with and any changes to your API or typos in your client can be clearly seen in your Blazor client thanks to end-to-end -to -end type safety of your server stack APIs. The Service Stack Blazor WebAssembly template gives you the right set of tools for building robust, well-defined APIs using Service Stack as well as the shared c -sharp language on your client thanks to Blazor. This provides a productive development model especially for line of business applications, enabling you to make changes quickly with confidence thanks to typed end-to-end -end services. And with Service Stack now free to use for individuals and open source projects, we hope more developers can discover the advantages of building message-centric APIs.
Well, that's it for this video. If you have any suggestions or feedback about our templates or videos, let us know in the comments. If you want to learn more, check out our other videos and join us in the ServiceStack community through our Discord and GitHub discussions. ServiceStack is free for individuals and open source projects, so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.